In this section, we're going to talk about finding volumes of revolution using cylindrical shells. Now, this method using cylindrical shells is going to be an alternative to the washer's method. So, let's take a look and see how this is going to work out. Now, before we actually look at these solids of revolutions, let's talk about how we find the volume of a cylindrical shells. Now we know the volume of a right circular cylinder is going to be pi r squared h, right? That we know that from geometry. So a cylindrical shell is simply like a right circular cylinder, a solid of right circular cylinder, and then you bore a hole inside of that shell. So as a result, we get uh, what seems like to be a tube actually of thickness. Uh, delta R. Okay, so that's going to be the thickness. So how are we going to find this uh, volume of this tube? Well, if you think about a solid, cylindrical solid of radius R2, and then from inside of that we take out a solid cylindrical cylinder of radius R1 out from it, so in other words we are removing this piece out of it, then we have what's uh, the tube of, again, thickness delta R. Therefore, the volume is going to be the difference between the two volumes. So each of those, remember, themselves are treated as right circular cylinder, so it's pi R squared, sub, or R sub, sub 2 squared, minus pi R sub 1 squared, and those two uh, we can work the algebra of it and it's going to give us the formula that you're uh, observing in this case. And, uh, and there we have it. So uh, how do this become what you see below it, the formula that is below? Well, first of all, uh, if you note up here, we have difference of two squares, r sub two squared minus r sub one squared. And those can be factored into a uh, product of two conjugate binomials. And then what in the next step, what happens is you can multiply uh, by two the expression, the entire expression. You multiply by two and you divide by two. So that's what happens here. Notice these twos can cross out and give you exactly what's above. It's just when you divide by two, you divide the right expression by two. And then R1, R sub 1 plus R sub 2 uh, divided by 2, this is how you find the average of two numbers. So that's going to be the average radius. That would be the distance from the center to the middle, if you will, the middle of that tube, the, of, uh, the tube of thickness delta R. So that's what I mean to the middle, of, it's to the middle of the, ra the radius. The distance from center to to that thick portion uh, of cylinder and that's why you see here we have expression that the volume of a cylindrical shell therefore is 2 pi average radius times height times thickness now remember height is of course is going to be the the altitude or height of the cylinder and the thickness we mentioned all along the thickness is delta r so we can actually now come up with uh, the formula that you see formula 2 in this segment using method of cylindrical shells where a region is revolved about the y-axis <clears throat> in this case now uh, right up here in this figure part a you're looking at the region so this is the region r that's being revolved about the y-axis and to the right is the resulting solid. And notice inside, actually this is hollow again, inside of that solid there's nothing because of this space that you see here. So that space is right here. And then ro rotation gives you another empty space here and that's over here, okay? And of course, uh, in part B we are looking at 3D. So that hollow actually inside of this, this hollow region, this is a hollow cylindrical uh, solid, okay? And 
so that's that's how you can do this note that this same same volume could have been obtained using washers if you use washers to wrap these around uh, we could get the same solid using horizontal washers okay so again cylindrical shells are alternatives to washers and sometimes they work out better some regions and we'll see example sometimes it requires two separate type of regions they require two different two different parameterization of the of the equation for the washers you got another or you got to use different sets of washers if you will as opposed to one cylindrical shell of let's say thickness delta r now um, here again uh, you're looking at uh, how this solid is evolved using method of cylindrical shells okay so a typical uh, cylinder of thickness uh, delta if you're now we're going to use delta x again remember here delta x is going to be the same as delta r that's up here so, okay this delta r that we look at the cylindrical chair uh, this will become delta x for us once we move this cylinder uh, once we move it with the base on the x-axis so we use delta x so a typical cylindrical uh, shell cross-section is that this thing wraps around and as it wraps around this is like a profile like half the shell that's like 180 degree rotation right here that's what it's gonna look like and the, the entire rotation revolution is what's gonna give you this uh, tubical solid and the volume this is the volume of the kth uh, cylindrical shell C subscript K this is the kth cylindrical shell and as before if you uh, sum these up that means you have several of these shells then uh, uh, the sum of those from 1 to n give you an approximation for the volume notice the volume is uh, approximately equal still so you have that approximation the volume is approximately equal to a finite number of uh, volumes of cylindrical shells and then what makes it exactly equal to volume and by exact here we mean within epsilon of the true volume is when you take the limit of the Riemann sum so we are back to that very important concept of uh, Riemann sums that we've used for several purposes and they will continue to be used throughout your sec the second semester calculus or even in first semester calculus where we use applications of uh, work fluid pressures and so on and so we're going to see more application of uh, Riemann sums uh, in the next section where we talk about arc lengths <clears throat> and areas of surfaces of revolution. The surface is what's on the outside. Right now we're concerned with the amount of space. That's what volume is. The amount of space enclosed uh, by a bounded region or, or a closed surface. Um, now, uh, one thing that, that's important here is that the rectangles must be parallel to the axis of rotation. So notice here, for example, rotation is about the y-axis and these rectangles, which ultimately will form a cylindrical shell, they go parallel to the axis of rotation. So if, if you want to rotate about the x-axis, then the shells will go in this direction. They wrap around like this. And that means the rectangles should be horizontal for rotation about the x-axis. And again, here you're looking at a, a representative vertical rectangle that is rotated about the y-axis. And the result gives you uh, this cylindrical uh, shell, which is right up here. That's exactly precisely what's up here. It's just a, a bigger, a better picture of that okay so keep in mind what's important is the volume is given by 2 pi x fx dx and the x here remember x is the average the radius the average distance from the center so that would be from here to here there you go that would be x 
for us. You see that that's what x is, and it is clearly marked on this uh, on this graph in part uh, in the green shell to the right. That is what x is. And here's another example of, let's say this time the equation is y equal negative x cubed plus 3x squared. And only this portion of, of the curve, that portion of the curve uh, is being revolved, or actually, I'm sorry, from here, there you go. This is what's being revolved about uh, the y-axis. So the shells are gonna go in a vertical direction, parallel to the axis of rotation, and uh, and then we can find the volume remember using using this formula of course we get the definite integral from a to b in this case uh, for what i see here the volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 3 it's always going to be 2 pi that's what this is x fx dx see everything is going to be in terms of x and uh, we can uh, fill in the specifics um, for this one. The volume would be 0 to 3 of 2 pi, which ultimately 2 pi would be removed to the front as a constant multiple of the definite integral. And it's going to be x. And of course, f as a function of x is going to be negative x cubed plus 3x squared dx. And then naturally you you will proceed so this will continue you will proceed to finding the volume that way but notice how simple it is to set it up the 2 pi x is a permanent portion of this formula what's variable what's going to change is of course the shape of the solid that's resulted depending on the function so it's always 2 pi x and then whatever that function f of x is okay now let's take a look at this example and then in a few minutes we're going to look at our own example so this was a good example because again the drawing is nice and i picked this example because it shows you how to actually find the same volume of solid of revolution using two methods washers and cylindrical shells okay so notice for this particular region when it's revolved about the y-axis uh, the washers, uh, the, this is important right about right here. Um, we need to change the equation of the outside, well, inside radius. Outside radius of the washer is that, and that's always at uh, x equals 1. That's outside radius for both of these washers. They have the same outside radius. But what's changing is inside radius. Notice that's the inside radius here, the inside radius of the other one, of the other washer. Right? So the inside radius of R1, region 1, the inside radius is determined by 1 minus y, the equation of a line. The inside radius of uh, this washer in R2 belonging to R2 is determined by another equation. Notice these are different. So if if we wanted to pursue this using washers, we have to have two definite integrals, which we combine and we get the total volume. Or instead of that, um, we could we could use just one cylindrical shells, uh, one definite integral that is using cylindrical shells. Uh, these cylindrical shells are going to look like this right so it's going to be the same uh, process for each shell these are all going to be shells of with uh, dx and the limits of integration easy it goes from 0 to 1 here's your 2 pi x and of course your uh, f x dx here uh, f of x remember fx here gives you the height right that will be the height of this washer and in this case the height uh, of each shell is determined by these two equations so you get the upper minus the lower equation to find <clears throat> the height so uh, in this case height which is f of x uh, is going to be the higher function x squared plus one minus the lower function 1 minus x right 
uh, and that's going to be the height and this will amount to x squared plus x the ones cross out there that's going to be the height of a typical cylindrical shell therefore the volume of this solid is going to be 2 pi limits of integration go from uh, 0 to 1 from here to here right for dx you go horizontal axis x 2 pi x remember that's always fixed portion of our formula and this is the effective f of x we're going to use it's going to be x squared plus x and then dx you see that and there you have it <clears throat> now um, again uh, so hopefully everybody can follow this is an interesting again alternative uh, to washers and it's good that we can do this two different ways and sometimes also it depends on the form of the function and the integrand it may be easier sometimes to do use uh, using cylindrical shells ultimately what matters is that can I integrate can I integrate that integrand that's what really the deciding factor is I may be able to set this one up using cylindrical shells, but then I may not be able to integrate the integrand. In this case, I could, but not always that's the case. Whereas here, if I set it up using two definite integrals, it may be more work, but that may be the only choice I have because the way the integrand is presented. Okay. Now, just something very important here to kind of sort this out for you. Uh, hopefully this will help everyone again when we use method of washers keep in mind that the rectangles are perpendicular to the axis of revolution of the solid and for cylindrical shells these rectangles will be parallel to the axis of revolution so that that's very important to note and uh, this is the last portion of this section um, now what if these um, shells go in a um, what do you call it about the x-axis what if the shells are of thickness dy and that's the case where rotation is done about the x-axis well the same process uh, exists the distance here now that would be y which is the average uh, radius to a typical cylindrical uh, shell right so it's kind of two pi is again remember that's portion for finding the volume of um, the tube cylindrical shell so this time we have two pi y and instead of f of x now we have to adjust because our variable notice everything has to be in terms of y now so our equation is stated as x equal f of y so this time um, we have to make sure the equation is in terms of y but the same process it's the same thing and then you get the solid so how do i know again when to use cylindrical shells or washers remember i mentioned that in another uh, in another section for washers when there's going to be typically a hole a hole in the solid of revolution we use either washers or cylindrical shells when there is no hole we use disks okay so let's take a look at some exercises in here i have i've copied these exercises from from your book and there's quite a few of them so i'm going to uh, work some of these uh, for you okay so let's up circle the ones i'm going to do in this segment so let's take a look at number two in exercise number two the question of course reads use the method of cylindrical shells to find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region about the indicated axis or line in number two rotation is about the y-axis notice in the first six problems the author actually helped us uh, determine how to do this how to set up the rectangles otherwise we have to if we were just given like this segment we we're given the equations we have to do that task ourselves so um, let's say revolving about the y-axis and notice when you revolve this by the way there is not going to be a hole in the solid okay so what I said earlier if there is a hole we use shells and washers 
uh, we could also use them in addition to that we can use them when there is no hold in in the solid that of revolution in this case there won't be so that's fine but if it is there is a hold we definitely use washers or uh, what you call it uh, we use washers or uh, cylindrical shells in this case we could also use discs to generate the same solid or discs using disc method we're going to use horizontal rectangle to achieve the same solid which in this case if you revolve that quarter of a circle because that's the equation of a circle um, the quarter of a circle you revolve it about the y-axis we're going to get a hemisphere right we're going to get a half sphere a hemisphere well if i revolve this uh, horizontal rectangle about the y-axis i'll get the exact same region so for this one indeed we're going to get uh, the, the answer is going to be we'll see it's whatever the volume of, uh, of a hemisphere is with uh, with radius 2 okay so in exercise number 2 therefore for exercise number 2 the volume is going to be the integral I'm just going to write the general form 2 pi x fx dx for reference that was our formula so the volume is going to be 2 pi. Limits of integration goes from 0 to 2, right? These rectangles can vary from 0 to 2 along the x-axis. And of course, it's going to be x, which is a permanent fixture in our formula. Our f of x is going to be 4 minus x squared to 1 half. That's what the square root of that expression means. And then the x. You see that? And at this point, how are we going to do this? Well, we can use a method of substitution for this one, right? So let's do substitution method. I'm going to let u be 4 minus x squared. Uh, du would be negative 2x dx. Therefore, negative 1 half of du will be x dx in this case, right? There's our x dx okay perfect and then the limits of integration remember recall if we change the variable of integration we need to change the limits of integration also so right in here um, when x is 0 u is going to be 4 and separately when x is 2 u is going to be 0 right 4 minus 2 squared so that's how the limits of integration will change. The volume is therefore 2 pi limits of integration. Uh, instead of from 0, they're going to run from 4. And instead of 2 for x, u is going to be 0. It's going to be go from 4 to 0 of uh, x dx, that's negative 1 half uh, du and of course the 4 minus x squared is u so that's just u to a half there notice the integrand is much easier to work with so the volume is going to be i'm going to cross out the twos here it's going to be pi notice how limits of integration are in improper order we use we always go from lower to higher so i'm going to swap those out put 4 above, 0 below, and to offset, remember, that's going to cause a negative, right? That's going to make uh, the integral negative, changes the sign on the integral. If it's positive, it will be negative. If it's negative, it will be positive. And of course, there is a negative of u to a half du, and uh, the double negative makes positive, so it's all said and done, that's pi 0 to 4 of u to a half du. And that integral is going to be u to a half, uh, integral of that is going to be half plus 1, 3 halves. So it's 2 thirds u to 3 halves from 0 to 4. And uh, again, let me put 2 thirds as a constant times pi and mm, uh, fundamental theorem of calculus the upper limit is 4 to 3 halves minus 0 to 3 halves of course 0 to any power is 0 and 4 to 3 halves that would be square root of 4 right half 
gives you square root of 4, which is 2 cubed, gives you 8. So the whole thing is going to be 16 pi over 3. That's, that's what this ends up being. 16 pi over 3. That's the final answer. And remember, the unit on volume is always the units, whatever they are, cube units. I usually don't write it. I mention it, but then I just uh, suppose we know that for every exercise, the volume would be cubic units. So if it's so if the um, things are measured in inches, it would be cubic inches, feet, cubic feet, meters, centimeters, whatever it will be cube of that unit. And there we have it, exercise number two. Now let's take a look at exercise uh, number six. In exercise number six. Uh, we're going to revolve this actually now about a line, about a line, x equals 3, right? So remember, we need to find this distance. That's going to be the average radius. Remember, the whole, the distance from the y-axis, from the y-axis to the line x equals 3, that distance is 3, right? So, um, for example, if I have a shell to, to if I want to shell uh, build a cylindrical shell at that point uh, this is going to be the distance so it's going to be 3 minus 3 minus uh, the x value right so this distance again is 3 uh, take away whatever that is and that's given by x right therefore uh, this radius is going to we're going to call that 3 minus x where this is the x right and that's what that is so the volume is going to be 2 pi limits of integration go from 0 to 2 in this case right these shells can they stop at this point okay so 0 to 2 and then uh, the radius right before it was x remember i said that in the 2 pi x fx i said x is a permanent fixture the x this is when the rotation was about the y-axis right about the y-axis that's permanently x but once you remove you remove the axis of rotation the line about the line then we need to adjust the x because x here is simply the radius that's what that is the average radius that is okay which we take it to be x because remember the width of these cylindrical shells delta x uh, is infinitesimally small so it's very small so we can just call it x okay and that, that would be 0 to 2 of 3 minus x right again that would be the average radius times now again for this one the height the higher function minus the lower function that will give you the height uh, which is going to be the upper function one half x squared plus two minus the lower x squared that gives you so this is the height this is the average the radius and the two pi was part of the derivation of that volume of a tube or cylindrical shell dx now let's carry on with this one so that was the setup of this integral um, now let's um, multiply this out so there's 3 minus x times um, it's going to be half x squared and negative x squared that's going to be negative 1 half x squared plus 2 and then the x there and we can foil this thing out and combine like terms 0 to 2 um, let's see the highest degree term let me do that one first is going to be positive 1 half x cubed I'm trying to put these in descending powers of x and next I'm going to get an x squared this way so it's going to be negative 3 halves x squared true negative 3 halves x squared and then uh, the x term is negative 2 times x makes negative 2x 
and 3 times 2 plus 6 there and dx so if I did this correct I did my foil correct that's what this would be okay so that's going to be 2 pi and now we can actually proceed with the integration right and the integral of half x cubed that's going to be x to the fourth over four so it's going to make it one eighth x to the fourth negative uh, x squared the integral of that would be x cubed over three which makes it a half x cubed the three that's in front in the fraction of three halves in the numerator of the fraction crosses out with the resulting cubed from the integration negative 2x squared over 2 so that's just going to be negative x squared the 2's cross out again plus 6x evaluated from 0 to 2 the lower limit because you have a polynomial in x and lower limit is 0 so we just don't have to substitute that so all we do is just plug in the upper limit that's going to be 2 pi times um, 1 eighth uh, 2 to the fourth is 16 right 1 eighth of uh, that's 16 minus 1 half 2 cubed is 8 negative 2 squared is 4 plus 6 times 2 is 12 okay uh, so this would be 2 pi 16 eighths that's 2 minus 4 minus 4 plus 12 it's gonna be 6 6 times 2 looks like that will be 12 pi the whole thing 12 pi and there you have it number 6 all right and that's that's that okay so let's take a look at now uh, exercise number 10 in these exercises now in this segment uh, we want to do the same thing they will ask you to sketch the graph and a representative rectangle and of course find the volume of solid of revolution about the indicated uh, axis uh, later on they're going to change these axes to uh, possibly a line just like exercise number six was okay <clears throat> so let me begin with number 10 in number 10 equation is root x minus 1 let me write this all right so here is the equation for exercise number 10 we want we have a region that is bounded by these equations so let's actually uh, let me try to graph these First, we have square root of x minus 1. Well, remember the general square root function looks like that, right? Root x minus 1, the negative 1 inside the radicand, uh, causes a horizontal shift of the square root to the right. So that's going to be that part of it. Okay, so this is at 1. And then the line x equals 5, that's going to be a vertical line at... Um, at 5 so I'm just gonna call it that that's going to be x equals 5 and y equals 0 is actually y equals 0 is the x-axis right this is y equals 0 so we have this uh, bounded region right in here and that is going to revolve or rotate about the y-axis true so our typical rectangle is going to look like that these rectangles once re revolve they form the cylindrical shell okay uh, with the x the average radius is going to be x true and uh, we are good to go on this one so i'm just going to write the volume is going to be 2 pi limits of integration from 1 to 5 of x right and then we have fx dx or f of x uh, is square root of x minus 1 and then dx okay so for this one again to integrate this we're going to make a substitution if i let u be x minus 1 then du is going to be dx 
So from here, by substitution, uh, we let our new variable u be x minus 1. Therefore, x is add 1 to both sides. x is u plus 1, right? So this is going to be 2 pi. I will change the limit of integration, but I need to replace x with, in this case, u plus 1. And of course, square root is going to be u to a half, and dx is du. Now the limits of integration uh, in u x minus 1. When x is 1, u is going to be 1 minus 1, 0. When x is 5, u is going to be 5 minus 1 is 4. Those become our new limits of integration. Okay, so it's going to be 2 pi uh, limits of integration that go from 0 to 4. And we need not change the order of integration. It's naturally from lower to higher, from 0 to 4 here. So this is going to be distribute u to a half inside the binomial. Uh, you get u to 3 halves uh, plus u to a half and then du. Okay, and now we can actually integrate. The integral of u to 3 halves, 3 halves plus 1 is 5 halves, so it's going to be 2 fifths u to 5 halves, and then plus the integral of u to a half, a half plus 1 makes 3 halves, so it's going to be 2 thirds u to 3 halves, and then du. And um, we can work this thing out now. Uh, let's see, so I'm going to have 2 pi, uh, oh, actually, sorry, I don't have du, because I'm, I'm done integrating, so now I can actually do fundamental theorem, that's good. So this is going to be 2 fifth of uh, 4 to 5 halves plus 2 thirds of 4 to 3 halves right uh, that's what that would be the three halves and the zero of course the lower limit because uh, you plug in a zero zero to any power is zero I won't even bother with that one so this is going to be now you uh, four to five halves again the half part in the exponent makes that square root of four which is two so this is going to be two pi times 2 to the fifth power, that's 32 times 2 makes 64 fifths, plus 2 cubed is 8 times 2, 16 thirds. Okay, and once we get LCD here, what's going to be? It's going to be 2 pi. LCD is, of course, uh, 15. So I'm going to multiply the first fraction top bottom by 3. Um, so the numerator of the first fraction becomes 192. The second fraction, multiply top bottom by 5, uh, makes it 80. And you have 80 plus 192 in the numerator. That's 272 times 2 is 544 pi over 15. And there we have uh, the volume of this solid of revolution number 10 okay hopefully everything reads well everyone's okay with the details let's take a look at the other one I had in mind it was number 16 so uh, in number 16 the expression is y equal x and then y equal one half x squared and the y-axis. Now for these, uh, I'm just going to set these up because they or uh, actually I will work these on a separate piece of paper. Okay, and uh, maybe don't go so much through the details of integration so the videos don't get to be too long. And I'll just put the answers for you. Okay, so uh, in number 16 we are given the following here's x and there's the y-axis uh, have one half x squared and that's one half x squared and y equal x 
will be this one, right? And that's y equal x. Uh, from 0, the point of intersection of the parabola and the line, uh, just said half x squared equal x. We set the y's equal to each other. Um, multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction here and bring the x over. Then factor the x, we get x minus 2. So there are two points of inter intersection at 0 and 2. This is x is 0, x 2. When x is 2, in the y equal x, when x is 2, y would be 2. Or you can plug it into the parabola. Okay. The rotation is about the y-axis. A typical, a typical rectangle is going to be a vertical. Remember, the uh, the rectangle is going to be parallel to the axis of rotation here. So this has got to be a vertical rectangle with dx. All right. And we can set this one up now. The volume is going to be 2 pi 0 to 2 of uh, x. And then the effective height is going to be the higher fu function x minus the lower function 1 half x squared and then dx. Okay. Uh, and the answer to this one. Uh, again, I'll work these out and then just give you the answers. So for this one, the answer turned out to be 4 pi over 3. It's a straightforward integration, the next steps. Okay, there's number 16. Uh, number 20. Okay, so here are again the equations for exercise number 20. In exercise number 20, uh, let's see, square root of x minus 1. We've graphed that one earlier, right? So we know what that graph is. That's going to look like this. And then y equals x minus 1. Here is you're going to have a line that uh, has a y-intercept at negative 1 and slope is 1 indeed so there you go it's gonna look like that that line uh, because rotation is about the y-axis we're gonna go vertical rectangles parallel to the axis of rotation of with dx the point of intersection again once we set these two equations equal to each other root x minus 1 square both sides we get uh, x squared negative 2x plus 1 bring the x bring the 1 over set it equal to 0 so we get x squared negative 3x plus 2 equals 0 and that's x minus 2 times x minus 1 equals 0 so we get x equals 2 and 1 so here's one point of intersection the other one is here and this isn't drawn to scale of course uh, in that the distance from here to here is one unit and there to there is one unit? I think not. But uh, it, it clearly specifies the region for us. That's my concern, that this part is nice visible to us. Okay, and we're good to go with this one. Let's set up the volume. It's going to be 2 pi, right? Uh, it's going to be 2 pi. The integral goes from 1 to 2, right? Uh, of x, and then f of x is going to be the outside, which was, there you go, it's all here. The outside is, this is root x minus 1, the inside is x. Okay, or x minus 1, sorry. That's the line x minus 1, yep, yeah. minus x minus 1, and then dx. And uh, again, we can, uh, we have to do, uh, do two different integrals in here. So it's going to be 2 pi from 1 to 2. 1 is of x root x minus 1 dx, and the other one, 
actually minus, because I can factor negative here, minus the integral 1 to 2 of x plus 1 dx, right? So we can, we can do that. Um, and just to make sure I set it up right, negative L minus, okay, this is going to be in actually parentheses, minus x minus 1. So when I factor the negative out, this would be a positive 1. Correct? All right. <clears throat> there. Or hold on, hold on. Because I'm factoring negative out, so it's going to be negative x uh, minus 1. Right? All righty. Um, let's do the integral. Uh, for this one, the first integrand, we have to, uh, let's see, for that one, we can use the u substitution. Let u be uh, x minus 1, right? Therefore, x uh, will be u plus 1. Right, x would be u plus 1, and the integral is going to be that of x, which is u plus 1 times square root of x minus 1 is u to a half. We did this earlier, just a few minutes ago. And of course, the limits of integration is going to change. When x is 1, u would be 0. When x is 2, u would be 1. And that's how you work this one. This other one is a straightforward, okay? So again, once um, once you work all of these, remember, I'm just gonna put the answer and then you can, of course, go through and see if you can verify the answers. Uh, this is gonna end up being uh, seven pi over 15 is what I got, okay? And there's number 20. Now, let's do one actually where the rotation is about the uh, x-axis. I haven't done that. So uh, for that, I'm going to do exercise number uh, 14. Okay, in exercise number 14. This time, it's a simple equation, y equals 3x, and the other one is line y equals 6. Uh, x equals 0 and we're going about the x-axis just want to do one of those so <clears throat> in number 14 um, the region is going to look like so first y equals 3x that's going to be let's say a line that runs through the origin that's y equal 3x uh, y equals 6 would be a horizontal line at 6 and that's this one and x equals 0 of course that is the y-axis right this is x equals 0 the y-axis rotation is about the x-axis so th the region is this region that's bounded now remember the shells have to be parallel to the axis of rotation because rotation is about the x so the shells must go like that and that's going to be with dy these will range from 0 to 6 right we can have them here 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 and so on all right and we are good to uh, go with this one the volume is going to be 2 pi 0 to 6 what used to be 2 pi x is now 2 pi y right y is this distance the distance to uh, the rectangle that's what y is the height of rectangle is going to be the right equation. Remember y equal 3x. That means, this means x is equal to y over 3. So it's going to be the right function, y over 3, minus the left function, which is 0. Oh, usually we just don't write that. You just write y over 3 here. Okay. And then dy. All right, 
So this is going to be, I'm going to bring the 3 outside. So it's 2 pi over 3. The integral of y squared is y cubed over 3 from 0 to 6. And uh, let's see. So this is going to be 6 cubed divided by 9 times 2 pi. The whole thing ends up being 48 pi. So <clears throat> that would be an example of doing a rotation about the x-axis. Now let's take a look at uh, something uh, over here. Let me do uh, number 28. So in number 28 again it says use the method of discs or washers or method of cylindrical shells. Notice we have an option here to find the volume of solid uh, generated by revolving the region bounded by the graphs of the equations about the indicated axis sketch the region so how do we know which method by the way we sketch the region it's very important folks that we sketch the region and then from that region we'll be able to uh, to do what we want to do <clears throat> and um, notice all three methods we can use all three methods at all times at all times because washers are a special case of discs those are discs with holes and of course cylindrical shells are alternative to washers which means alternative to to discs with holes so you can use any one of these three methods always it's just the question is um, which one is easiest to to do the integration problem that's what it amounts to now when I graph this one as we graph this one uh, both of these are these are equations of a circle right that we have cy equal root uh, 9 minus x squared when you square both sides we get y squared equals 9 minus x squared bring the x squared over so both of these are equations of a circle uh, of radius 3 centered at 0 0 the second one is a scaled multiply by two thirds, right? <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, here is x, there is y. So that first one is going to be a half circle, right? It's going to be something like this, and I can remove this portion there. So that's that one. And let me take that part out. Okay, so that's the, the let's call this uh, the outside one. This is going to be square root of nine minus x squared. Now the inside uh, one, it's two thirds. See, uh, so the ordinate, the height of this graph is going to be two thirds of the other one, right? Two thirds is less than one. So the y again the ordinance of the graph for this half circle is going to be slightly uh, lower uh, and for this one let me graph this other one so it's going to look like this all right and uh, of course we can do better graphs of these uh, using a graphing utility true so let me see if I yeah that, that's good let me stay with this there that's reasonable reflection of what this is radius 3 and that's 3 also all right and uh, remember these regions are supposed to be symmetric <clears throat> a rotation is about the y-axis so we're going to revolve this about the y-axis. Uh, let's see. Let me go with a vertical rectangles. Now, vertical rectangles here, uh, because uh, there you go. The rectangle has width the x. Those vertical rectangles are parallel to the axis of rotation, aren't they? Uh, they are parallel to the axis of rotation. Therefore, that means a recipe for what um, cylindrical shells. 
So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use cylindrical shells for this. And let me uh, write this. So we can set up, uh, let's see, we got the points of intersections. Perfect, we're good. So I'm just gonna write the volume is. It's going to be two pi. Now we're gonna use a symmetry. Okay, and uh, oh, we gotta be careful here also, because if we go from negative three to three, it looks like, because see, from zero to three, once you revolve this, we're gonna create a solid. Negative two to three to three will traverse or go over this solid twice, right? So we go zero to three. In other words, we don't need this portion of the graph when we revolve this, right? So you gotta be careful with this, folks. The limits of integration, zero to three of two pi x, and then fx is again the outside function, which is root nine minus x squared, minus the inside function, two thirds. Uh, I mean by inside function, I don't mean it in the way of a composition, I should say, outer function inner function that would be better than rather than outside and inside but uh, however you call it this is going to be 2 pi uh, and uh, let's see what can I do here uh, let's see oh, I can combine these right or those are like radicals 0 to 3 x you have a whole radical, negative two-thirds of the same. It's like x minus two-thirds x is one-third x. So it's going to be one-third of nine minus x squared dx. True. And uh, let's see. So I'm going to notice you cannot bring the x out, right? The variable of integration you cannot bring out. Only the constants. So for this one, ultimately it becomes this x root 9 minus x squared dx and this is good if i let u be 9 minus x squared then du would be negative 2x in dx so negative half du is x dx and i i see x dx in here all right so uh the volume is 2 pi over 3 limits of integration when x is 0 u is going to be 9 when x is 3, u is going to be 9 minus 3 squared, which is 0. So it's 9 to 0. Limits of integration turn out to be improper in improper order. They go from high to low should be the other way around. But we'll, we'll swap them in a moment. So this is just going to be times, um, uh, and then here's your negative 1 half u to a half du and then again once we um, swap the limits of integration this negative is going to become a positive with the negative that results in swapping uh, the limits of integration so this is going to be simply pi over 3 0 to 9 remember you cannot 0 to 9 I cannot just say 9 to 0 by accounting for by a negative on the outside all right and that's going to be u to a half du and uh, again for this one it's going to be pi over 3 uh, u to a half integral of that is 3 halves so that's 2 thirds u to 3 halves 0 to 9 that's going to be 2 pi over 9, 9 to 3 halves, which is the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 cubed is 27. That's 2 pi times 27 over 9. And that's going to be 3. So the whole thing ends up being 6 pi. Okay. And there you have it. Exercise number 28. Again, you could have you could have uh, used uh, washers in this case, right? We could have used. Let me see. Uh, yeah, but uh, maybe this was easier to do. But yeah, we could have used uh, 
oh, washers, let me see. Yeah, the washers, we're going this way. Remember washers, uh, the axis of the washer will be perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Okay. And if you do use washers in this case, we have to go uh, x as a function of y. Okay, so um, let me let me help set this one up number twenty eight using washers. Okay. Okay, so what I want to do now again here is I want to do this. I want to work this for you using uh, washers. Okay, just so you see what is involved here using washers and. Uh, so cylindrical shells, we saw how this turned out, but now let's take a look at washers. 28 again, this time using washers. Now, when I draw the region, okay, remember how our regions were drawn. We had one that looked like this and the other one, a half circle that was on the inside. This was, let's say, the y-axis and this would be the x-axis. 0 to 3 is all we're interested in. Now, um, this is important, folks. I'm going to split this right here, the point, the peak of the first half circle to the peak of the outside, the outer circle. Because, and here is why I have to do that. Because these, uh, the rotation is about uh, the y-axis, right? And so, in this case, the shells, I'm sorry, the rectangles are going to be horizontal rectangles, right, with the washers. Uh, so these washers can go through here. Notice that's the, the right function is the half circle. Also the left, uh, the left part of that rectangle is determined by the other half circle, semicircle. That gives you the height, if you will, of the washer. Now, right here, and this point is 2, this is 3 based on the equation of those two uh, half circles. The limits of integration actually change here because look at what happens to a typical washer. Look at the, again, the, the right equation is a half circle just as it is here. See, these two have the same right side. But what happens is, look at the left, it's no longer given by uh, the half circle. So from 0 to 2, the equation on the left is the green, right, the half circle, and then it changes actually from 2 to 3. So if I want to do this using washers, I have to set up two integrals. So let me do that. The volume is going to be, remember for washers is pi, let me just put the general expression for washers is outside radius squared inside radius squared times dx right pi r squared outside minus inside squared <clears throat> now i've got to set up two integrals so the first integral is going to be oh and also what i need to do i need to express these half circles their equations in terms of y not in terms of x Okay, so the equation that was um, y equals square root of 9 minus x squared, this becomes y squared plus x squared equals 9, or x is square root of 9 minus y squared. And of course, when we take square root, we have plus minus, right? But because we are in the first quadrant, both x and y would be positive. Now, Um, and next, I'll do the same thing with the two-thirds. So y was two-thirds the square root of 9 minus y squared. If you work this one out, and it ends up being the following. I got it to be, see what I get it to be. For this, x turns out to be square root of 9 minus 9 fourth y squared. Okay. Now I can set up my integral and let's see what it's going to look like. So it's going to be pi for the first integral. The limits of integration go from 0 to 2. 
Okay, oh, and by the way, how did I get the two and three here? It's simple. We look at the equation of these half circles. The lower one was um, this one, right? Uh, sorry, this this is how I got the two. You simply, and I made a mistake here, this nine minus x squared. You put zero in for x in here you get the square root of 9, which is 3 times 2 thirds gives you 2. That's how I got the 2. <clears throat> so it's a 0 to 2 of the right. The right equation is the square root of 9 minus y squared. squared. That's outside radius squared minus inside radius squared. That's going to be square root of 9 minus 9 fourths y squared squared dy true and then we need to add to this plus uh, the integral from 2 to 3 the inside e equation is 9 minus y squared squared that's uh, that gives you the outside radius right sorry the outside radius squared minus the inside radius is given by uh, from 2 to 3 the inside is uh, 0 squared there dy so look how much more complicated this has become now true this is more complicated now because I have two integrals and the, the expression is not as simple as what it was up here all I had was this integral that I that I evaluated but this should give us the same answer <clears throat> so if I pursue this one um, let's see the integral from 0 to 2 let's work this one so here's pi and I have integral from 0 to 2 of Square root of 9 minus y squared squared, that's just 9 minus y squared, right? Minus square root, the next square root of squared gives you 9 minus 9 fourths y squared, right? dy, that's my first integral. Plus the second integral from 2 to 3, well, 0 squared, that's just 0, right? So I'm not going to count that. You square the square root, we're going to lose the radical sign. And there's the second one. So it looks a little better, not as intimidating as the one above, <laughs> right? Now I can work. I can work the first integral and combine like terms. When we combine like terms here, the 9 and the negative 9 add to 0. Negative distributes gives you positive 9 fourths y squared, like term with negative y squared. So this becomes the integral from 0 to 2 of simply 5 fourths y squared dy. Much, much simpler all of a sudden. Okay. And plus, we can actually integrate the next integral, definite integral. That's just going to be 9y minus... Uh, let me fix my 9. There you go. 9y minus one third y cubed evaluated from 2 to 3. So the first integral is now 5 fourths y cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 2 plus the second one is going to be I can actually do fundamental theorem on this one. Upper limit is 9 times 3, 27 minus 1 third 3 cubed 27, that's 9. That's upper limit minus the lower limit gives you 2 by 9, 18 minus 1 third 2 cubed 8. So 1 third of 8 is uh, 8 thirds. Mm -hmm. And then this will become pi. Now plug in 2 in for y in the first integral that's 2 cubed 8 8 divided by 4 is 2 so this first one is going to be what I'm going to keep it with a denominator of uh, well, I can simplify it never mind okay so it's 
2 cubed again 8 by 4 is 2 2 times 5 is 10 thirds lower limit gives you 0 the second expression that's 18 minus 18 so these will add to 0 that's always a good sign double negative would make it positive 8 thirds so the whole thing is going to be 18 pi over 3 and 18 divided by 3 is 6 pi hopefully that's what we got earlier yes that is exactly what we got so notice again what determines which method is best it really depends on are we willing to go through things like this or not if you don't mind it then <laughs> that's that's fine but remember now sometimes it turns out truly the integrand <clears throat> we cannot integrate it so that's really the first and foremost rather than whether i have two or three or one integrals to evaluate and there we have this one let's take a look at one last problem from this section and then we'll be done now for this work let's take let's do one where we have to revolve about i don't know the line y equal 2 so number 32 would be a good one to look at <clears throat> number 32 so let me draw this one here is x and uh, let me actually extend this because we are revolving about line y equal 2 true so let me let's say that's line y equal 2 that's where we're rotating about now the equation is y equal root x true so y equals square root of x that's kind of like that well y is 2 here so in y equal root x when y is 2 then that means x must be 4 so the point of intersection is going to be 4 comma 2 right that's 4 comma 2 rotation is about the line y equal 2 so I'm going to use cylindrical shells since we are in this section remember the rectangles go parallel to the axis of rotation they both go in that same direction perfect so the width is going to be dy this isn't going to be bad at all <clears throat> and of course um, the height is easy to determine um, the height of the shell is going to be easy to determine this is the height of the shell okay the length of the shell if you will uh, on the right side and you can draw a few representative rectangles if you want to get a better feel for how to set up this height notice on the right side it's always touching x equals 4 right and on the left side on the left side it depends on on the curve right so uh, this is the x this would be the x and so on so the effective height if you will of that cylindrical shell is going to be 4 minus x right but let's see we're <clears throat> right uh, let's see right so this uh, the volume is going to be 2 pi limits of integration go from 0 to 2 um, and and of course remember here if I solve for x square both sides x is y squared right um, and this is going to be uh, 0 to 2 of uh, hold on a moment okay it looks it looks good so uh, again we can figure out the height no problem now so it's going to be 2 pi and this is the height the height is going to be 4 minus y squared right and then dy um, that's 4 minus x actually but then x is y squared right now the average radius let's say the distance right in here this is the distance this is the radius that we want okay 
call it average radius. Now this distance is determined by, uh, let's see, here, if this is y, from 0 to 2, the effective average radius is going to be 2 minus y, right? That's 2 minus y. That's the distance from the line y equal 2, from this line, to a typical rectangle. Okay, so there you go. If you draw these, you can see that. Uh, that's how they're changing and this will be this will be the setup for this exercise the integration isn't difficult in this one the volume is going to be 2 pi and integral from 0 to 2 if you've actually foil this and write them in descending powers let's see negative y y squared is going to be negative negative is positive y cubed next one negative 2 y squared negative 4y and 2 times 4 is 8 plus 8. I put it in descending powers of y when I did FOIL. And this is going to be, so the integration is pretty easy. 1 fourth y fourth, negative 2 thirds y cubed, negative 2y squared plus 8y, and then of course 0 to 2, which I'm not going to bother with the lower limit. 0 makes everything 0. Next to the last step. We're plugging a 2. 2 to the 4th is 16. 4th is 4. Negative 2 times 8 is, that's 2 cubed, 16 thirds. Negative 2 times 4 is 8. And that's 16 and let's see 16 minus 8 that's 8 and 4 12 12 minus 16 thirds so that's going to be 36 minus 16 thirds so that will be 20 thirds if i did that right and all said and done the answer the volume is going to be 40 pi over 3. and there you have it Okay, I think, yeah, I think that would be it. And uh, um, yeah, we're done with this section. So hopefully, hopefully you followed everything we did in this section. And uh, that completes uh, volume of solids of revolution. So we have, again, three methods, disks, washers, and cylindrical shells that we've covered all three of those. And we are done with this video.